In Creo Parametric, you can perform composite design. In this video, we will take a look at defining our core ply. In previous videos, I performed my setup and defined some manual plies. Let's get back into the composite modeling environment. I will select my composite feature in the model tree and then choose edit definition from the mini toolbar. And here I'm back in the environment. Here's the command for creating the core apply, but just to unclutter the screen a little bit beforehand, let me select the existing plies and hide them just so that we don't have all those other additional colors on the screen. So for creating my core apply, I will click on the core apply command. That will open up the ribbon. Here's where you can change the rosette. We have a drop down list for our material. And these are the different materials that I added to the model. I do want the Arex as that is a core material. And then we have an orientation dropdown list. The default values are 0, 45, 90, and minus 45. I'm happy with the 0 degree value because this is a core. Now we're going to find our boundary chains for our core ply. And you have the same basic options as when you're doing a manual ply. You can use a single closed loop, one outer loop and one inner loop, multiple loops, or multiple intersecting edges, curves, and loops. In this particular situation, I'm going to use multiple loops because I know I want to have some cutouts later on. So for my outer loop, let me move my mouse over the model. And in a previous video, I created a closed loop curve. That's what I want to use, so I will click on it. Now let's add in the loops where we're going to have cutouts later on. And I think I want to use this one over here. And let's add in a, another loop. I'll use this one over here. And later on, if I decide that I'm unhappy, I can always edit definition of the core apply feature. Let's take a look at some of the other different settings. If I go to the core settings tab, well, this has a bunch of different controls, just like you have in other parts of the dashboard. Here's where you can change the material, you can change the orientation, you could choose a different rosette. Here, instead of using the default drop-off value, you could specify a drop-off value. And then we have a space for the name and the sequence. Let's go to the taper tab. This is something that you do not have with a manual apply. And so let's define our taper for the core. For the first set, I will select the outer boundary. And here we have the values of 20 and 0 for the D1 and D2 dimensions. You can change these values. Maybe I want this to be a value of 5, so I will enter that in. And then we can define taper for the other two loops in the boundary chains. Let's choose new set, and I will choose this one here. And for this one, maybe I want to use a value of 15 and 0. And then let's do one other set, and let's use this one over here. And once again, I will use 15, hit the Enter key, and 0. The Properties tab is a place where you can change the name of the feature as it will appear in the laminate tree. So this is good. Let's hit the check mark. And now I have my core defined. Let me turn on the visibility of the other different plies. And one thing is that I don't want the core to be the sixth one in the list. I actually want it to be after the first ply. So you can use drag and drop in order to reorder the features in your laminate tree. So let me grab this and I'm going to move it up between manual ply one and manual ply two. You can see how it is reordered here in the laminate list. So I am happy with that. So now that we have a bunch of our plies and our core defined, in the next video, I'm going to take a look at a bunch of different ways in which you can manipulate the plies in your features, including things like copy and paste, remove ply, changing the material for multiple different plies, setting up your color mapping, changing the sequences and changing the names of your different entities in your laminate list.